Hi, I'm Chef Nicholas Lodge and welcome to this third part of my winter foliage mold. So in this particular part, I'm going to show you how we make juniper. So we're going to start off with the juniper berries and then the juniper leaves. And then we're going to move on to another sort of iconic sort of like winter tree, which is the yew. And we use a lot of that in uh, flower arrangements and obviously in the Christmas time, holiday time. So we're going to be doing the yew berries and then finishing off with the yew leaves. So let's get started. So in the previous two videos, obviously I've shown how to use several parts and components of the mold. So in video number one, we started off with obviously the spruce or the fir, and then we moved on to, uh, once we've done that, I showed how to make pine cones in my Nicholas Lodge pine cone mold, which is the larger pine cones. Then we moved on to the uh, hemlock and uh, lark, uh, large uh, cones and also the large, um, obviously here, the little leaves, all right? And um, then in video two, we went on to uh, show how to use the sort of cedar conifer here, so the four sides of that, how to use the little berries, which are the ones with like the little stars on, the triple one and the single one at the top here. Um, and then we moved on to the, here, to the bay laurel and uh, showed how to make the leaves here and then how to make the berries, which you can make in this mold or I showed you in my holly mold and then also some freehand berries. So in this uh, particular video, in the third part, I'm going to show you how we're going to start off by first of all making the juniper berries. Now, the juniper berries there are going to be done in the mold that has almost like a trefoil, like a three lobes in it. It's got like three lines in the bottom of it. There's a larger one and a smaller one. So these are the two cavities we're going to use. Remember in book number four, there's going to be a, um, a layout of obviously showing you exactly what all the components are also in the leaflet in the packaging as well. So uh, you'll be able to identify, but it's the one with the three lines in. Now we're going to start off by uh, first of all making a floral tape bud. So we're going to make, which I've done on, in the first part and the second part, we're going to make some little floral tape buds. So we're going to use quarter width brown floral tape. And uh, so we're going to use that. We're going to go around five times, hook, and then five more times. And in some of the parts, I've done it three times, hook times three, sometimes four times, hook times four. It depends on what you're making. But here we're going to do five times. So just stretch your tape a little bit. We're going to go around the end of the wire. So one, two, three, four, five. We're going to hook it. This is obviously a soft wire, so 28 gauge. So we can just bend that uh, with your fingers. And then one, two, three, four, five because this is actually going to be like a, obviously inside. And when we also do the, um, the U, we'll be using the same sort of technique to represent a little berry in the inside. Now you'd make as many of those as obviously you're planning on making berries. And um, so we're going to start off, first of all, so colors, we're going to use just the sort of the foliage green. So this is the same green we've used on quite a few other projects. Just gives you a good foundation color. And then, of course, we're going to add color on top of this. So in this case, we're going to measure off number five small. So we're going to, so these are the immature berries, all right? So these will be the small immature berries. So we're going to measure off a number five small, okay? And now um, juniper has, Obviously the juniper, there's lots of again, different varieties of juniper, and uh, we're making more of this sort of classic style, which looks a little bit like rosemary, okay? And as I explained, we're using the, um, the cavities on the mold. You can also make lavender and rosemary leaves as well. So pretty much rosemary is just like this, but it doesn't have berries on it. And uh, this is the common juniper. So juniper is obviously what is used for gin. And uh, as I said, the juniper berries are green and black, all right? So you have the little immature ones and then obviously the more mature ones. So when we make the immature ones, so we're going to um, make into a sausage press in the smallest cavity with the three lines at the base. So we're gonna take the, the smallest cavity, which is here, and we're gonna take your number five. I'm just gonna condition this. But these will be like almost a little tiny baby uh, berries. We're gonna make that into a little sausage shape like that. And this is a number five member that goes through the hole. You're just gonna push this into the mold and this will basically sort of fill the mold up a little tiny bit more than we need, all right? And, but we're gonna be working around the back of this. So then we take our companion tool, ball tool end of the companion tool. We're gonna make a hole into the center. Then we're gonna brush a little bit of glue Remember, I'm using just the generic term glue because if you're working with air drying clay, this would be PVA glue, but obviously you can use egg white for traditional paste, um, obviously edible glues and things as well. 
And so we're going to take this, going to push this into the center and just going to mold that around the back like that. Just going to mold that around the back of here. And then you're just going to flex the mold. This will come out of the mold here. I'm just going to just mold it just to get rid of that seam. And you're just going to mold around the bottom. You see how this is going to have three little tiny lines on it. So you have the three little tiny lines onto here for these three little lines. Here we go. So you can see the little three lines onto there. Okay. And that would be your smallest one. Now, when we move on to the next one, we're going to then do similar. We're going to use here a number six small of green. So this is going to be a number six that goes through the hole. Okay, and we're going to just again just condition this. And we're going to just roll this into a sausage. This is going to go into the large cavity. Now this is going to be bigger than, um, the cavity is bigger than what we need. But what we're doing is we're just pushing this down into the bottom of the cavity. You see how it's obviously only filling about two thirds of the way up. Um, and then we're going to repeat as for the small berries. So we're going to just repeat. So we're just going to make a hollow in the middle here. And then we're going to take your glue. A little bit of glue is going to go onto the Floral tape bud. So though the air drying clay sticks to itself, I still always, when I'm using air drying clay in a craft application, would always put glue on my wires and things like that. Now also remember this wire is quite soft, so you can't sort of like push it in from say here because the wire would just bend. So you want to hold it quite close to the bottom. It's going to push your wire in. And then what we're going to do here, we're going to flex this around the mold. So what you can actually do is just push with your fingers. So you see how I'm just pushing with my fingers here. So you see how you're going to get really just like a larger version of the original one. Just going to mold this around the bottom here. Just pinch this around the base. And then on this one, what we're going to do is we're going to mark in a little deeper. Okay, so we're going to then mark, remark the line, the three lines using needle tool or the companion tool. This will make the medium berry. So here. What we're going to do is we're going to just going to use your companion tool and I'm just going to press that in to the second and almost into the third. So you see how it makes that a little bit more defined. Okay. So the first one you're going to just leave as is and then the, but it also, as I said, just you just get this sort of natural shape of the top of the berry. So that will be the, um, that will be the second one. So that's going to be the um, second uh, berry. And then for the large berries, we repeat the process, but use black and purple. So I'm using here a black and purple color. All right. So this is also a good little tip. These are mylar bags. These are really good for keeping your paste in. It keeps it very fresh. So especially when you're working with like air drying clay, but also with sugar clays as well. And uh, but I have here a black and purple. So again, if you're doing this with um, air drying clay, what you can actually do is you could make up a a recipe of purple, all right, which is number one white, magenta, yellow, and blue. And then also you could just then take some black. So just equal amounts of black and purple. If you're doing this with sugar, you can buy, there are some companies that sell pre-made black flour paste, gum paste. Um, alternatively, you could just, of course, color it black and then add some purple color or violet to it. It's the same sort of color I do blackberries, all right, or you can actually use this. Now, when you do blueberries, I use the same, but I use blue and black instead of blue and purple. Um, as I said in the videos, the little one with the star there um, on the uh, second uh, one, when I showed the conifer berries, you can use those for blueberries. So again, we're just going to take this. So this is number six regular size. So we've measured off a number six regular size here. All right, so it's going to be number six regular. So that's going to be one third below, two thirds above. Okay, again, we're going to then, going to make this into a little sausage shape. Because see, when you take your little sausage shape, when you press that down into the mold, of course, it's going to, going to create the shape. And this will actually fill the mold up um, to the top, okay, the number six size. You're just going to press that in with your companion tool, so that helps to push the paste down. And again, we're going to take the little bit of glue here, so just a little bit of glue, it's going to go on to the end here. I'm going to push this into the middle. Again, you're just going to flex, 
Now I usually find this easiest to lift this up uh, in but you see how you're just gonna flex, gonna flex, gonna flex, gonna flex. So a little bit like a lot of my molds is gonna mold the paste around the, the back there so it sort of elevates the paste out. Just flex the mold so it comes out. So you have obviously a black purple version of that. Again, just gonna mold this around just to get rid of that like little seam. So taking either some needle craft scissors or some spring action scissors, just something with a fine end onto it. We're going to make some little cuts into the top three. Now, when we use scissors, we normally would use scissors like this to cut fabric and paper and things. Here, we're gonna use the scissors on their side. So what we're actually gonna do is where the three segments are, you're gonna just take your scissors and you're just gonna cut into one, gonna cut into two, gonna cut into three. So using your scissors, see what you're actually doing is just making like three little cuts onto the top there. So what it does, it's just going to give you like a slightly, so it almost like the little uh, berry is bursting open. All right, and that's how you do the little top part. So just make your one, two, three, like that. And you just will continue making as many of those as you need. So these will be our, um, you know, three different berries. You can see size-wise varies. So this one is just a sort of basic marking. This one you just mark with your uh, companion tool and then this one you're gonna cut with your scissors and that will be our berries. So these need to dry. And when I come back, I'm gonna show you how we make the leaves. So for the juniper leaves, we're gonna make these just like um, I showed making the large leaves and hemlock leaves. And also as I said, this could be used for rosemary, it can be used for lavender, lots of different applications. Um, so that is gonna be made in these three little tiny molds here. Now, when I showed the large, I only used the small and medium cavities. Here, I'm gonna use all three. All right, so what I'm actually gonna do is I'm gonna make 12 of each for the spray I'm gonna show you or the branch I'm gonna show you. So 12 small, 12 medium, 12 large. So this is really, is it an identical technique, it's just you're gonna see the large one and also a little different, they're a little bit more pointed. Now, so we're gonna take 30 gauge wires because we need 36 of these. Uh, we're going to um, gonna take the wires and gonna cut the wire in half. And you can just use like, these are just like school scissors because this is obviously, a very, very soft wire. And then you're gonna then take each half and do it into three. I'm just gonna show you a couple, but as I showed on that particular, on the large one, you can use a magnet. A magnet is a great way just to keep your wires organized. This will give you the 36 wires we need for the project, okay? So those are your wires prepped. So these are 30 gauge green wires, okay? Uh, some things we can use white and green, but because of we're not going to pre-tape the base of these on certain things, we always use green wire uh, here. And uh, so that's gonna use the wire. So we're going to then brush the, um, the, as I said, this mold with the vegetable fat shortening. So just to, again, just a little tiny bit on that, just on these three cavities. And just remember when you finish with that, just wash that. We're gonna use um, some juniper. So this is actually being colored with a juniper uh, paste color called juniper. So obviously this gives you the correct, but if you don't have that, you can just use a dark green and just add some gray to it or a little bit of black. So it's almost a little bit like a sort of a, a military green color, all right? Um, and again, in book four, there are gonna be formulas for the air drying clay and for the, um, obviously the sugar versions, all right? Just sort of go through the colors so you can remember those. So we're gonna take a number five ball of green and uh, so we're gonna take a number five size ball of green. So it's gonna go into there, one third below, two thirds above. All right, so it's gonna be our just standard size. And then we're going to condition this. So, so this is like when I showed the large, so you're just gonna condition this. And then what we do, I'm gonna roll it into a little sausage. I also showed in that segment on video two as well. You can use your little companion tool. It's a good way to get an even sausage of paste. And then we're gonna cut that into 12. So you're gonna cut it into quarters. Just using here a little mini palette knife, but you can. So you're just gonna cut these into quarters like this, or into thirds. Just cut it into quarters and then into thirds. So this will give you 12 little small balls of paste, okay? And it's gonna be the size we're gonna use for the smallest. And then you wanna just pop these underneath a little 
pot. Generally, I do 12 of these at a time because especially, you know, when you're working with sugar or air drying clay, um, of course, you know, they're, both of them are air sensitive, meaning they're going to dry out. So especially cut such a little tiny ball will dry out quickly. So um, we're going to do that. So you're going to take your wire. All right, so we're going to take the wire. So you're going to dip the end of the wire in glue and insert through the ball and stretch slight, top slightly past the end of the wire, then down to make approximate length of the small cavity. So you're going to put a little bit of glue on the end of your wire, just a little bit of moisture. You're going to insert the wire into there. And now we're going to then just roll that. So it's going to come past the end of the wire. It's going to come down. So this is going to be the sort of the length of that small cavity here. Okay, and you can just press this in with your finger. Remember, if your finger's sticky, you can just put a little tiny bit of uh, corn flour, corn starch on there, a little bit of, uh, as I said, vegetable fat shortening, or also with air drying clay, you can use a little bit of like cold cream, moisturizing cream as well. Now you're just gonna put, press the first one in, and then you take this out, okay, and you're gonna get this little line on there, and you turn it over to the other side, and you repress it in. It's just gonna make sure you get the shape correct. So when you take this out, the side that's got the little line on it, all right, this, this side here is the front. So you're gonna pinch that, and you're also just gonna pinch that to a slight point. On the, um, when we did the large, we didn't do that. We left it more rounded, but here you're gonna pinch it to a slight point. And you'd also do that on rosemary as well. So you can make the little tiny leaf, okay? And you just put those onto a piece of foam to dry. Um, so I just got a piece of fun foam on top of some foam or directly onto a piece of foam like this and you're just gonna make those, and they dry pretty quickly. Now, when you move on to the medium one, um, so repeat with a six small, so then when you go to the medium one, you'd make a number six small, so that would be a number six that goes through the number six hole, rolled into a sausage cut into 12, and then um, then you're going to then, when you do the, uh, the, the medium, the, for the medium and for the large, you're gonna use a number six large. Now. Um, as I said in the last two previous videos, I've only used large size once, but because normally we use either a small size, which means it physically goes through the hole, or obviously a regular size like I've just shown, which would be one third below, two thirds above. But when we are talking about, say for example here in number six large, what that means is that the paste is gonna sit uh, into the hole. So it's got this in your text as well. So it will be about one quarter below and about three quarters above. So you see how it's a, a lot less below the here, about three quarters above and about a quarter below. Because as you can see, the next size up to choose would be a seven small, but this is way, way smaller than a seven small. So there are sometimes in teaching, although there are 16 cavities on the size guide and we use obviously small or regular size, there are sometimes situations where we have to do this. And then the other thing is you wanna condition the whole piece of paste at once because normally we condition as you go, all right? But here it's much, much easier because you imagine picking up a little tiny piece of paste and each time you're doing that, having to work a little bit of shortening into a vegetable fat. So we're gonna just roll this into a sausage. So remember you can just use your fingers or as I said, you can just use your little scraper. And this little scraper is so useful for so many different projects. As I was saying in video two, when you do, you know, for example, like put sugar paste rolled fondant on a cake and use this to smooth, use this for stenciling technique when I do stenciling on cookies or on cakes, when you do um, also like ganaching of cakes, there's all sorts of things you can use the little flexi scraper for. But this would be the, this would be, and you cut this into 12, all right? So I'm just gonna show you just one of these so you've got an idea of how the bigger one looks. So exactly the same technique, and then that would use up the 36 wires. So you're just gonna make that into a little ball, and then we're gonna put just a little bit of glue on the end of this. Now to dip it or even use a paintbrush, and then it's gonna just gonna come past the end of the wire. So the wire pretty much is going all the way down the length of this, and you're just gonna just stretch this down. So this will be to the length of the larger cavity, okay? And then here, we're gonna just press this in with your, you can also use your cosmetic sponge there. If you do have sticky hands, you can just use your cosmetic sponge as well. And then you take this out, all right? So when you take this out, see, so it's gonna give you this line down the middle here, the bottom part of that. But we're gonna turn this over and then we're gonna repress. So of course, when you do that, you're gonna lose the veining 
slightly there, but it just, it gives you the right sort of shape. All right, so really you're doing it twice here. And then the side that it's got that you take out that was underneath on the second time, you're gonna just pinch that and just gonna pinch the top to a slight point like that. And that will give you the little tiny um, leaf. But these can be used for all different uh, leaves as well. So there are many, even flower petals can be made with that. So here we have our, um, as I said, our 36 leaves uh, for our juniper. So 12 small, 12 medium, 12 large, along with the berries they need to dry. And then when I come back, I'm gonna show you how we um, assemble and color these. So for the um, dusting of the juniper, we're gonna use some white dusting powder, which is titanium dioxide. So you can also buy, it's like a white powder color, uh, which is used, obviously titanium dioxide is used a lot in uh, commercial uh, fondant, sugar paste, and uh, many different applications. But anyway, so we're gonna use a round brush, all right? Not, don't load too much color onto it, but I'm gonna put this sort of like cloudy uh, look on that. So you're just gonna brush just about halfway down with this uh, sort of white cloudy look. This is a little bit like when you have blueberries, you have that sort of almost like, and grapes as well. Now we steam this later, so when we steam it, it, won't, it will be more translucent. I'm also gonna brush just a little bit of white onto the green berries as well. All right, so you're gonna have a little bit of white about halfway down the green berries. So of course you do that on all of your berries you're gonna use in your spray. Um, then we're gonna move on to the leaves. Now the leaves, we're gonna use a chocolate brown. So it's gonna take a little bit of brown here, just a little chocolate. And all I'm gonna do is gonna take the leaves. So I've got, you know, 36 leaves. I have 12 of each size. I'm just gonna tap those level going to open them up like a fan. All right, and then what I'm going to do is just hold them onto my napkin. I'm just going to go across the with the brown here like that. You could do them one at a time if you want to, but just going to just going to go around over the base of the leaves here with just a little bit of chocolate brown just right at the bottom there. Okay? And it's going to give you the the uh, as I said the chocolate brown. So you do that on all of the, all three sets of leaves, the 12 small, the 12 medium, and the 12 large. So next we're going to move on to the assembly. So we're going to start off with three small leaves. Now, when we did the U, um, the U we obviously had it so that we had the, obviously the center of the leaf where the, the little hollow is in uh, visible was on the front side because we dusted them different colors here. You're just gonna group these. So don't worry too much about the positioning of the, whether you have the front or the back of the leaf. And so you're gonna take a 22 gauge wire. This is about two thirds length. Now the length of wire will also be dependent on how you're gonna use this as well, but you're always gonna need at least half a length of wire. But of course you might want a long, tall arrangement. So you're gonna use some quarter width floral tape we're just gonna start with your quarter width floral tape. Just gonna open this out. So just gonna open those out like that. But this is really the same way we would do rosemary. The difference is when we do rosemary, you're gonna be using a little bit more of a sagey green color, but plus also um, you don't have any obviously berries there. Now, of course, rosemary does have little flowers on it. So you could make little flowers just like lavender flowers um, and they're gonna go, go on. But you're just gonna come down here and then you're just gonna do Another little group in. So I'm actually gonna do, gonna do four now. You can also take your tweezers at the bottom. You can take your tweezers like this and you can just bend a little group in. You can just put that into position. You're gonna go around with your floral tape. So you see how that's gonna just sort of sit a little bit to the, to the side here. And you can just sort of open these up almost like little sort of like little needles. And then I'm just gonna take the five. So just tap them level. Because the wire goes all the way through them, it's, you don't have to be too gentle with these. Just gonna use your floral tape because we've got the brown on the bottom of it. But what we do is we'll go back with the brown if we need to, and we can put a little bit more brown if you have any sort of visible wires or things on there like so. So you see how you're gonna have your little group in of uh, your little berries. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put in a single berry. So I'm just gonna put in a single berry. So I'm just sort of bending that almost like at a right angle. So that would just sort of sit into there. You see the 36 leaves get used up very, very quickly, all right? Then I'm just gonna take 
So I just split these up. So I'm going to just do them in like fours. Or you can do a three and a five, you know, really, as I said, it's just sort of, uh, because of course, every grouping would be a little bit different in real life. So I'm just going to just take these, but see how I'm just going to take them in a little group. And you're just going to use your here. Again, when we're putting things together like this, you know, we have to take into consideration sometimes we're going to be using, um, it's going to be sort of sitting flat on a cake or a craft project, um, or also sometimes it wants to be more three-dimensional. So if you want to make it more three-dimensional, of course, you can just go round a little bit like a candy cane or helter-skelter, putting things in. So where you position things, a lot of times when I'm doing a spray like this, I'm going to be using this with uh, other I said seasonal flowers, other uh, flowers with like a maybe a poinsettia, and then add in some of these. So the thing is, is I'm wanting it really a little bit more like almost like half relief here. Then I'm going to take now two. Now generally you want to work in um, odd numbers, you know, like one, uh, one, three, five, you know, for your main flowers and things. Here we're going to just put in the berries. You see I've got three of the little green immature berries, so I'm just going to put those. So I've got one and then I'm going to put two in there. So I'm just taping down just a little ways each time, okay? And then I'm going to put in a group of three. As you see, I'm just holding those. And then it's just going to come up from the, from the side here. Okay, and then I'm going to put in one green and one. So this is going to be the, so see I'm going to do two and then I'm going to do like three. So just aesthetically it looks more um, attractive then. Now quarter wit tape of course is a um, little bit more fiddly to work with than using half wit tape, but it's uh, good when you're doing, um, obviously it doesn't make the stem of this very thick because like rosemary and uh, Juniper and that doesn't have a really, really thick woody stem compared to some other things, you know, like more like trees. If you think of using rosemary in the kitchen, you're going to take, it's very similar thickness. This will be about actual thickness there. But see, so you're just going to then just, so I've used up my, I've used up my, my uh, medium ones. So now what I'm going to do is going to go through and I'm going to put in some large so of course this is just going to give us one stem of um, one stem here. But of course this gives a lot of impact, and you only would need a couple of these into a spray. But it's really nice, as I said, to to include some of these um, elements because they're sort of really fun. And you can see how it's going to work through here. You see how this looks a little bit just like rosemary. So rosemary would just have little clusters like that. All right, and then we're going to put in the. So I'm going to do now a group of four. So I have three, four, and basically five there. Now, if you feel more comfortable, another thing you can also do is if you feel more, you know, like getting them in position, you can also actually just pre-tape the little groups together. So you just slide the tape up to the bottom. So you see, you can actually do them in little groups like that as well. So if you feel that you have more control there, uh, putting those together. So I'll just show you that. So you just group them out. So just separate them out. You're going to take your tape and just slide it up to the bottom. Okay, so you can either put them in in little groups, just holding them with your tweezers, or as I said, you can put them in like that. So I'm going to now put in, you see how I'm just bending them because they're pretty much going to be attached right at the bottom where they, where they will meet. And then we're going to just going to Put on my steamer to warm up. Because what we're going to do is we're literally just going to just use a little bit more brown on here if we need to on the bottom there. And then we will um, just going to steam this. And then the steam is going to give your berries that sort of cloudy, cloudy look. Remember, these need to be dry. So when you bend them like this, I'm going to put these in a little cluster. And again, you could you could actually put the berries together as well, you know, so just showing you some different options. You could also take your little berries like this as a little cluster again, if you found that easier to put in.
and then it's going to just going to tape tape this on and then we're going to put in your final cluster here and then once you get the final cluster on usually it's easier than on the main part of the stem you can just use your half width floral tape all right so you can start off with the quarter width tape and then we can just finish off with the half width tape here so just with the half width tape you just tape this down to the bottom so this is on the 22 gauge wire and then we can just take a little bit of brown so if you do have any little areas where you and you can just almost just sort of just like touch that at the bottom because when you handle them you're going to pull a little bit of the color off because we haven't steamed them so you can just put just a little bit of brown just at the base of the pieces there all right so this is going to give you your beautiful juniper and then we're going to then take that juniper and then this is going to just be steamed so we're just going to steam this so and then again for air drying clay like we talked about in obviously um, the first and second video for air drying clay all you do is you'd spray this with unscented hairspray all right and that's going to set everything so you're just going to just give that a, a set of spray good spray with unscented hairspray but here we're just going to just spray that we're just going to steam it you see what it's going to do is going to give your berries but there you'll have that more of an effect like you have on a blueberry where you have see the steam has obviously um, sort of affected the white in that you get that just that almost like cloudy look on here um, so when you're doing like as i said uh, blueberries and certain fruits we use this technique so here we have our as i said our um, obviously juniper uh, ready to be used in whatever type of application you wanted to so now we're going to move on to the U. Now, for the U, we're going to use, first of all, I'm going to show you the berries. So the berries are the uh, these two here. They look almost like a little bit like a ring donut or a bagel in the bottom of them. They have this little ring in them. So there's two sizes. So these were the junipers. So you see overall they're bigger. This one is bigger than the large, small juniper, and this one is obviously bigger than the uh, large the juniper one. So same concept, though. And then this is actually the U leaves. Now, um, the U can also be used, this could be used as like a Christmas tree foliage, like obviously like a fir or spruce. It's a little flatter, obviously not quite as dimensional as the other mold, but for certain things, like if you're doing craft application or you're using this on sort of something where you want more of a flat effect. So on something like say a card with air drying clay, it wouldn't be quite as dimensional, a little flatter. So you could totally use this with pine cones and other things as well uh, for, as I said, a spruce or a fir. Now we're going to, um, you're going to repeat the process. So just to show you here the, the um, U. So this is the common U here. And obviously U has got these green and uh, reddy orange berries, a little bit like tomato color. There's also this sort of orangey variety. So this would be nice in the autumn time if you wanted more of the orangey colors here. But uh, when we make the U, so we're going to, first of all, make the berries. So we're going to, just going to repeat the process exactly the same as I showed at the beginning of this video for the juniper berries. So we have 28 gauge wire. We have quarter width brown floral tape. We go five times. We make a hook five times, okay? And continue down the wire. So just make that exactly the same. And then once we've got that um, completed, we're going to start off. We're going to use just the two smaller size berries will be made in the regular foliage green. Um, so we're going to take, so this is going to be a number five size. So this is going to be a number five size berry. So just regular number five size like this. Going to just condition this. We're going to roll this into a little sausage. All right, and it's going to go into the small hole with the little ring in the base of it like the. Just going to pop that in. This will just fill the mold up. Just press that in with your cosmetic sponge. And then taking your companion tool, we're going to hollow out the middle of this. So it's going to hollow out the middle. And then we're going to take some glue here, put a little bit of glue onto your floral tape bud. And then you're going to insert that into your paste. All right, again, lift this up and then you're just going to flex around the mold. So you see when you flex that, what it's going to do is going to push the paste up a little bit. So you can actually mold around the base while it's in the mold. We're going to take that out. I'm just going to just mold that to round the bottom off of that. So this looks very similar to a little 
baby acorn, all right? And if you wanted little miniature acorns, you could actually use this as a little acorn and then you could actually just texture that. So you could make a line, you'd make a line around the bottom of this and then you could just texture that with your tool to make little texture on it. When you dust it, it looked like little miniature acorns, all right? You can also make, for example, this is the larger cavity we're gonna use next. You could actually use that size to make an acorn, all right? Which would be obviously like a, a six large and then you just can make that and then I literally what it is just press the little six number six small in the middle of the my acorn and uh, nut mold my fruit and nut mold and put that on the bottom so you see you can make little tiny acorns so again for like petty fours cupcakes uh, for small craft applications and that earrings you know things like that you could obviously make little acorns using that same mold um, as well but anyway so that's going to be the the smaller one so that's that's going to be like that and then we're going to then move on to the next um, berries. Now these are going to give you these traditional cone shape we have the U has, which is a little bit more conical shape. And you see how you can actually see the brown uh, floral tape bud in the center of this. So this is going to give you the... So we're going to take your here. So we're going to go, so we're going to repeat with a number six small. So this is a number six small this time. All right, so we had number five. So now we're going to go to a number six small. So I'm just going to go through the hole. Just condition this. And then this is going to go into the cavity here. So we're going to make this into a sausage here. And it's going to just make sure if you get any little creases in there, just give it a little bit of a knead. Okay. This is what we call conditioning the paste, which is an important part of the elements. You're going to take this into a sausage shape. And then just push that into the into the mold. Again, just going to press that in. Just going to push that into the middle here. It's going to make a little hollow in the middle. Then you're going to take your piece here. And then once we've done that, all right, so we're going to then uh, press it in with the ball tool. And then uh, so we're going to remove and hollow the center of the berry, pressing in with the ball tool. So we're just going to take this out. Okay. You're just going to just make that into a little bit of a cone shape. All right, and then what we're going to do here, we're going to just press into the middle where that little hollow is. It's going to press into there, like so. Okay, so you're going to make a little hollow in there. And then we're going to just on the soft side of the pad, I'm now going to use my little companion tool, ball tool. You see what I'm doing is I'm rolling just inside the rim here. So you're making almost a little like a bowl shape, okay? So on the green ones, we don't want to make them too... So you're just going to roll around the outside, so you're just inside the rim there. So you see how you're going to create that shape, all right? So you see how you've got the shape here. And then we're going to take your companion tool, needled end of the companion tool, make a little hollow, little hole in the middle. Now we're going to take the glue, and then with your glue, we're going to just put a little bit of glue around the bottom, because we only need the base of this, because this is going to be threaded in from the top. So this will be threaded in through the top of this. So you just actually thread that in through the top. You see this is gonna come down and you're gonna pull that till it sits into the base of the little U. So you see how it's sitting into the base like this. And then you're just gonna just mold the back. You're just gonna mold the back like that. And see so just, uh, but that's gonna give you your green, as I said, your U berry, okay? So that will be the green one. And then we're gonna use uh, here, going to use a uh, orange and red color. So with air drying clay, you literally can take equal amounts of equal amounts of the two uh, colors, orange and red. And with sugar, you could use a pre-colored red you can buy. And then of course, you could just add some orange gel color, or you could take some orange and red and color it. But it's just, as you can see, it's just almost like a sort of an orangey red color. Now this is going to be, uh, so here we're going to take for the very large, for the large berry, we're going to take a number seven small, all right? So this is going to be a number seven small, basically made in the same way. We're just going to work with a little bit of shortening into here. Let's give that a knead. And then we're going to then roll that into a sausage. Just going to put this into the mold here. I'm just going to trim off just so that this is level, all right? Just makes it you're going to have a little bit of extra paste here. Okay. Just going to press that in with your, you can just sort of press that down just a little bit. So it just gives you just like a little, 
helps to push the paste into the detail in there. I'm gonna flex this out of the mold, I'm gonna flex this out. Just gonna mold this with your fingers. So you're just gonna almost like taper your back a little bit, like so. All right, and then again, we're gonna just take your, you're gonna push your tool into here. And now we're gonna just work the rim of this. So this we're gonna be doing a little bit bigger because obviously you've got a bigger piece of paste. But you see how I'm just opening this up, but then just see how I'm just rolling. I'm just inside the rim with my, with my small uh, ball tool on the companion tool. So you see how you're gonna create this cup. All right, it's gonna get the cup here. And then again, it's gonna just gonna make your hole in the center like that. Again, we're going to take your glue, just going to put a little bit of glue just around the base of the floral tape bud. And then I'm going to thread this down through the middle until the seed just sort of, you want just the tip of the seed visible. So you see how the, the actual seed is in the middle of there. Because this is how the U berries are. They're almost like little cups like this a little seed visible in the base of them. All right, and that's gonna be how you would make the, how we make the, the berries. Now we leave those to dry. Um, and again, you know, of course, all of these things can be expedited in a food dehydrator, uh, which we talked about in the first um, part of the first video. Um, so next we're gonna move on to uh, making the yew uh, leaves. So for the yew leaves, so you know these are the leaves of the yew, and of course can be made unwired, which is great for all different like cakes and things like that. And of course, just like the uh, spruce and uh, fir, we can make these wired. Uh, we also like the spruce and fir, we can cut this down. So if you want one that's a little bit smaller or even smaller still, you can cut this down to the uh, desired length uh, on the smaller or the larger one. So we're going to, uh, first of all, going to brush some the inside cavities with your vegetable fat or shortening, okay? Just gonna just make sure you get into all of that detail, but just a really, really small amount of this, all right? It doesn't need a lot. Remember on your air drying clay, this can also be done with cold cream or like Nivea cream, moisturizing cream, you'd have, have on there. So then we're gonna take your paste. So we're going to start with the small one. So we're gonna measure off a number seven small. So this is a number seven small size ball of paste. This is just the foliage green, same color as I've used for the uh, green part of the berries, okay? So as I said, we've used this throughout as just almost like a neutral green, and then we can, of course, be able to build color onto this. Um, so we're going to now um, make into a 30 millimeter long sausage, all right? So we're just gonna make this into about a three centimeter, 30 millimeter sausage, like this. All right, so it wants to be about 30, 30 millimeters in length, okay? Like so. Um, and then so about one and a quarter inches, and then uh, we're going to then brush glue over the end, 45 millimeters of the wire, one and three quarter inches. So we're gonna then take your, your wire here. So this is gonna be about, as I said, about 45 millimeters. And we're gonna put just a little bit of glue over the wire here, like so. And then you're gonna take this, gonna insert this into your sausage all right, so it wants to come to the end there, all right? And then you're gonna insert the, to the sausage almost all the way to the end, all right? So pretty much almost, almost all the way to the end there. And you're just gonna make that slightly pointed on the tip, all right? And then you're just gonna stretch your sausage down so it wants to make slightly pointed with three quarters of the length of the cavity, all right? So you want to just uh, make this about three quarters of the length of the cavity. Now then what we're gonna do is gonna place that into position here gonna press this down, okay, like so. A little bit like the spruce, all right? And then um, the way to lay the wire in the center of the cavity sitting in the channel of the mold. So obviously your wire wants to come out the little channel at the bottom here. And then, um, then you're going to then uh, press in with a cosmetic side, uh, sponge wedge, then work with Dresden tool on its side to fill to the edge. So we're gonna take your um, cosmetic sponge or your wedge and you're gonna use that to uh, fill this in. All right, so you're gonna work this to the edge. It's gonna work that down. It's just gonna work this to the edge of the mold here, like so. I'm 
significance coming down to the bottom here like that. You know, as long as the wire isn't physically sticking out, but you can also, you've got a little bit of thickness here of the piece, so you can just sort of re, if the wire is visible, we can put that back. And then you're gonna take your, so then with your Dresden tool, just gonna just work this into the, here. We do this a little similar to the way we did the back, um, the back uh, part of the second part of the um, spruce and uh, fir in that we're going to work that into the, the mold here. Okay, so we're going to work that into the mold there. And then we're going to then, once we've done that, we're going to create feathered effect on back of leaf, um, taking the needle tool and the companion tool work from the wire out. So because you only do one side of this, you don't generally do this double sided. So then what we're going to do is we're just going to emulate that same sort of vein in, you almost have that sort of feathered effect just going to work this. And again, this is only necessary if you were potentially going to sort of see the back of this. All right, I'm just going to just work your U here. Again, you can just, just insert, just press that in with your, there we go. Just going to work that around there. So the wire is not physically sticking out, but don't worry if it's a little bit, because it's going to be dusted. It's going to work that like so, okay? And then you're just going to flex this, going to take this out of the mold, and you see how you're going to get your beautiful U here. And then just like on the, um, the spruce, you can take some scissors and then you can just make some little cuts, just sort of some little random cuts like in between the pieces there. If you do have any like little membrane, which the membrane would be like almost a webbing on like a duck's foot, you can just go in with your, that just means you've got like a little membrane of paste, but you can just push that in with your companion tool. So you see how you're just gonna make just some additional little cuts on here if needed. And then of course you could make this shorter. If you wanted to make this shorter, you could just cut it here and cut it there at an angle. Gonna hollow the base. All right, I'm just gonna, just gonna pinch that. So it's gonna just pinch up slightly. Okay, and then that will then just dry in your convoluted uh, foam. All right, so you're just gonna dry that in your convoluted foam. So it would dry in that sort of like a nice natural shape. All right, it's quite a flat leaf, but as I said, this could be used also for spruce as well, like on a Christmas cake or uh, other things. Now this one, as I said, you know, like when we talked about the spruce, you could do this with modified sugar paste or rolled fondant, like we did the pine cones. If you weren't gonna wire it, if you're just using it on a Christmas cake, obviously with, uh, but this is a little sort of finer. So just this one, generally speaking, if you're doing it in sugar, I'd recommend using your flour paste, gum paste for this, all right? But so this one could be done with modified because it's not quite as uh, fine. And uh, just like the conifers, you know, the conifers are, that's why of course, generally everything I've shown you, I've done with flour paste, gum paste, flexi paste. So the thing is, is you want to use um, a sort of a paste you'd use to make sugar flowers with, all right? But as I said, the spruce there and the little cone, you could do the little cones as well with uh, just a modified sugar paste or rolled fondant. So we're gonna now do the, um, so once we've done that, we're gonna make the large U, we're gonna use an eight small. I'm just gonna show you that as well so you just see that technique again. So this is gonna be a number eight small. They're just gonna go through the number eight hole. Again, just work some vegetable shortening into this. And then here, we're going to then make this about 45 millimeters long, about one and three quarter inches, brush glue on, and then stretch down to about 60 millimeters, okay? So this wants to be about 45 millimeters long, four and a half centimeters. Okay. And then we're gonna actually put the, the wire wants to be about 60 millimeters, six centimeters long. It's just, when you're doing things like this, um, it's important that your glue is uh, sticking on the whole of the length of this. So that is why you're going to put the glue over the surface here. And then we're gonna insert this into our sausage. This wants to go almost all the way to the end of our sausage. Gonna make it slightly tapered on the end and just gonna stretch this down. Okay, and this wants to be about I said about 60 millimeters, all right, which is going to be just about the six centimeters, which is gonna be about the length of what we need here. All right, so we're gonna just place this into there. So remember, so you're making this about three quarters of the length of it, but then when you position it, 
you position it a little bit in from the top and a little bit in from the bottom. All right, and then you just wanna just press this down just first, because what that's gonna do, that's going to just sort of establish the wire. So you see how the wire is sitting into the channel there. And as I said, then we're just gonna just work. Now, another way you can also do this, because it's a little bit wider, you can, if you want to, you can just use like a stick like this, and you can just use, just to sort of roll it towards the outside. See, so you can actually just roll that. But also, you know, just takes a couple of minutes to do, but you're just gonna just work with your, with your tool here. I'm just gonna work that towards the end. It's gonna work this into here. Remember that the, the large U here is a little bit uh, finer, but it also has that little area, because this is obviously taken from a real piece of U, so you get the natural look to it, so it's not symmetrical each side. And then of course you can take your Dresden tool here, you can just work that in with the Dresden tool, or in this case, like for the fine things, you can use the veining tool, but just stay within the perimeter of the mold. Just like I showed a little bit on video two as well, if you do have any like little areas you need to patch, you know, like if you have an area where you just need a little bit of extra paste, you can of course patch that, but so you can just work that veining tool into the end here. But if you have like a little tiny area, just like right at the bottom there, I just need a little tiny bit of extra paste. So see, you're just gonna use that as like a little, almost like a little patch. And that would just patch into the, so this we're gonna just work that into the, here, like so, okay? So that's gonna be how you would work that in. And then with your companion tool, we're just gonna, just gonna work this, a little bit like a feather. And then on the other side as well. You see how I'm just working from each side of the wire. So you have this slightly thicker part where the wire is and uh, just gonna come down just like the end part here, like so. Just rub over the surface of that, and just make sure that it's clean. So remember, because you wanna stay within the perimeter of the mold there, like so. And then we're just gonna flex this, gonna take this out. All right, so it's gonna give you your, this will give you a U here. And then you're just gonna, just gonna make your little cuts. And then your little cuts are gonna be made so these would just sort of divide your, just divide that up. Now, of course your, your end will set, you just, you're going to just pinch this like a slight taco shape. Just gonna hollow around the base here. And again, this is gonna just go into the convoluted foam here. So this would just go into, to dry. And here is your, um, this is your U. Now we let this dry and then once this is dry, we'll be ready to move on to the coloring and then finishing off. So we're gonna take some chocolate brown for the U berries, some dust. And of course, this would also be the same for craft as well. So just gonna put just a little bit of brown, just to the very, very base of the berry and also on the red and the green ones as well. I'm gonna go around the bottom. And then uh, once we've done that, all right, so you do as many of those as you need, we're going to then steam them. Okay, so we're gonna just steam, steam those a little bit of steam. So with air drying clay, you just would take these all, you can hold them all together like this, and then you just would spray those with unscented hairspray because what that's gonna do is gonna set the dust. So steam for sugar, um, unscented hairspray for clay, okay, for air drying clay. So we're just gonna, just gonna steam those. That's gonna just set the brown. And then you can just place them into a block here. Like so. And then we're gonna take some glaze. So we're gonna use some full strength glaze. So this is a little bit like uh, when we did the, um, the bay laurel, when we made the berries, made them shiny. So this is like glaze for sugar. For air drying clay, you could use basically clear nail polish, all right? Alternatively, you could also use like the Sculpey product I talked about uh, in the second video. Uh, the Sculpey has a glaze, a hot 
high gloss glaze and then they have a satin glaze. So generally satin is what's used on leaves. So that would be like comparable to leaf glaze. And then as I said, gloss glaze would be used comparable to confectioner's glaze. All right, so what you're gonna do there is you're gonna just brush that all over. And you see that because you've steamed them, the glaze, uh, the, um, the, pat the brown will actually be sort of set, almost like just again with the air drying clay with the um, hairspray that will sort of act like a fixative. So it sort of sets the powder. I'm just gonna just brush these over the top. So pretty basic, but just gonna make those, those shiny. Okay, because the new berries are shiny. You know, remember some berries like, you know, for example, holly berries are shiny and some berries are more of a matte finish. So it depends a little bit on uh, what they, what color they are. So those are just gonna dry a little bit. And um, then, uh, got actually just a little too much glaze in that one. I've just like almost like overfilled it. So just if you do have too much glaze, just take some out. Because you just, you just want to not have it full, okay? And uh, that, that's gonna dry. And um, so that will be glazing. Now on the leaves, we're going to take the leaves here. We're going to take these. Um, so gonna come about two and a half centimeters, about one and a, one, one inch down. So gonna just tape, just gonna slide this up. This is half width brown tape. It's gonna come down about two and a half centimeters, 25 millimeters, about an inch, okay? And uh, when we do the leaves, now the U leaves are sort of brighter green at the end and then they have a darker color. So what we're actually gonna do here is we're going to take your going to use an apple green color. So I'm going to take some apple green. And of course you do this like on all five leaves or seven leaves, however many you're using three. So with the apple green color, we're going to dust from the outside to the inside about a third of the way down. Okay. So you see how I've got come about a third of the way down with this um, apple green. This is a brighter green. You just see how I'm just using my, my finger here just to support this. All right, so we're going to do that on the ends. So you do it on all of them. And then we're going to then change out to a forest green, which is a darker green, which again we've used for some of the projects, like on the conifer and on the spruce and things. So we're going to just take this. And then this again is going to be brushed from the outside to the inside on the bottom two thirds. And almost where you get to the, the where the two meet, you're just going to sort of almost like blend it. So you have that sort of blended darker green into a brighter green. But just brush from the outside to the inside. Okay, like that. Then we're gonna take some chocolate brown. So again, I'm gonna just use a, a flat brush. It's gonna be more like an angled flat brush. And then what I'm gonna do here is I'm just gonna brush from the bottom just in one direction. So you come from source away from source. So the brown will dissipate a little bit as it comes towards the top. So you almost exhaust it. So then gonna do the same on the back here. It's gonna just use your brown and it will just almost like fade away. So it's not as dominant and strong there because you have these uh, pieces. Because I mean, this is just a very quick way to make you because like obviously you is a little bit like the juniper berry, the juniper leaves in there, all little individual leaves, but this sort of emulates that look of it uh, with ease. And then you're going to then, um, all of your you leaves will be steamed. So these will be steamed. So again, you're just gonna give them a good steam. And then that's going to it's going to sort of just set the color and you're going to get this sort of two-tone effect, you see? So you have this brighter green at the tip and then this darker green. It's sort of almost like a, gives you that. So just gonna let those dry for a couple of minutes and then when I come back, I'm gonna show you how we assemble this. For assembly of the U, I'm going to start off. So this is actually a cut down one. So this is one that I made a little bit shorter, all right? So I'm just gonna have a short one there, but of course you can do these in different configurations. So literally what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna put a 20 gauge wire up against the base of that. And I'm gonna use half width floral tape. And just with my floral tape, just gonna come down just a little ways, just a little bit there like that, just to secure that. I'm then gonna take a single berry. So just with a single berry, I'm just gonna place that into position. So I'll have that sort of almost like sit in just sitting in the, the top there, like so. So it's just almost coming up at that sort of angle. 
you know, and they're a little sticky, don't worry about it, but it just obviously the glaze takes a little bit of time to, to dry, okay? And then we're going to take now, going to put in a, a small one. So this is basically just straight from the mold. It's going to be just a small one. So we're going to have that sort of just coming over like this again. And you might lose like a couple of little tiny pieces here because, you know, um, even in air drying clay, when they dry, they can just sort of break off, but don't worry too much about that. Of course, if it was noticeable, you could go in with some dust. And then we're going to put in two more berries. So it's going to put in two. So these are going to just be like a little um, unripe berry, so immature berries. Then we're going to have another small. So I'm just going to almost like just stagger those a little bit. So they would just sort of come up from here. And then I'm going to put in a green and a red. Of course, you can do any, any combination of these that you want to. Just going to create the spray of the piece here. Then we're just going to put the going to have that sort of coming out from here. So this is going to be, so, you know, everything is quite flat here on your view. So then it's going to come down just a little ways. I'm going to put in another, obviously, piece here. So I'm just staggering them. It's going to stagger the pieces. And then we're going to then put in the last couple of berries here. I've just done the two and two, but you know, you can do, but I've just, you can see I've swapped these over to the opposite side sort of thing here. And then just going to take down to the bottom because we've already glazed the berries and we've already steamed the, um, the leaves pretty much ready. And that would be like if you were going to use it, you know, like in, uh, say, a wreath or obviously an arrangement, you can use this in, uh, as I said, different ways. So here we have the um, U. So I hope you've enjoyed this third video on making juniper and making U, both the berries and the foliage. We'll have a lot of fun working with your new Flower Pro winter foliage mold. Until next time, this has been Chef Nicholas Lodge. Sweet wishes. Bye.